The US military skipped a number, and somehow, the Soviets ended up wasting billions of dollars trying to counter a weapon that didn't even exist. We're going to uncover how this actually became a weapon, what the Soviets did when they found out, and why the Air Force really skipped F-19. So to understand why a missing number mattered so much, you've got to know how predictable this whole system was. Since 1962, naming fighter jets was pretty straightforward. You get an F for fighter, then just the next number in line. F-14 Tomcat in 1970, F-15 Eagle in 1972, F-16 Fighting Falcon in 1974, F-18 Hornet in 1978. It was totally predictable. Everyone understood how it worked. The only number they'd ever skipped was 13, and that was obviously just superstition. But then, in 1982, Northrop unveils their next fighter, the F-20 Tiger Shark, not the F-19. The Pentagon didn't say a word about it. The Air Force just stayed completely silent. And in that silence, everyone starts asking questions. Aviation enthusiasts begin buzzing with all these theories. If they deliberately skipped a number, they've got to be hiding something, right? Something huge. Something so classified they can't even admit it exists. So this skipped number becomes instant proof of a cover-up. Not because it was actually true, but because silence? That's the loudest answer you can possibly give. And honestly, the speculation was just getting started. By 1985, there are rumors going around that the military's testing something absolutely revolutionary out in the Nevada desert. Something that sounds straight out of science fiction. An aircraft that can turn invisible to radar. Stealth technology. Like the holy grail of Cold War aviation. The government denied everything, obviously. Officials just laughed off the questions, dismissed everyone's concerns, and treated anyone who asked like they were some kind of conspiracy theorist. But then actual physical evidence starts showing up. A classified Navy budget document gets leaked, and it mentions something called an A-19 aircraft. Now, it was really just a proposal, something that never even made it past the blueprint stage completely unrelated to stealth. But newspapers spot it, and they start connecting dots that probably shouldn't have been connected. Like if there's this secret A-19 that nobody's heard about, then surely there's gotta be a secret F-19 too, right? Every single piece of circumstantial evidence just made the theory stronger. The skipped designation, the denied rumors, the leaked documents, everything seemed to point to the same conclusion. The F-19 didn't actually need to exist anymore. The government's silence had already built it up in everyone's imagination. And then something happens in May 1986 that turns all this speculation into an actual international crisis. A $10 toy shows up on hobby store shelves that's going to convince Congress there's been a security breach and make America's enemies believe the F-19 is completely real. Tester Corporation releases this F-19 stealth fighter model kit. Now this wasn't just some random toy company. Tester was famous for being obsessively accurate. Their model kits were so incredibly detailed that military enthusiasts actually treated them like unofficial intelligence documents. And this F-19 design? It looked dangerously plausible. Super sleek. Futuristic. Exactly what you'd imagine a stealth fighter should look like. So this reporter spots the kit in an Ohio hobby store and immediately asks the big question. Did this toy company just accidentally reveal a military secret? He runs a front page story, and it just explodes overnight. The Associated Press grabs it. CBS Evening News sends out camera crews. Newspapers all around the world start publishing photos of this model kit. By June 1986, it's reached Capitol Hill. Congressman Ron Wyden standing in a hearing room literally holding up this plastic model kit, demanding answers. Has national security been compromised? Is the U.S. actually building some invisible jet? And why is Congress being kept totally in the dark when literally every kid in America can just walk into a toy store and buy a model of it? And the timing? It made everything so much worse. Just weeks before this, Lockheed's chairman had stood in front of Congress and admitted that the company had lost 1,460 classified documents related to their top secret stealth aircraft program. Like 1,400 classified documents just gone. So naturally, this toy looked like hard evidence of some massive security breach. Here's what nobody realized at the time, though, whether the toy was actually accurate or not. 
it didn't even matter anymore. It had already convinced Congress there was a real problem and made America's enemies believe the technology was out there. The damage was already done, and then things somehow got even stranger. One month after that congressional hearing, something crashes in the California desert that nobody was supposed to see. July 11, 1986. Some classified aircraft goes down near Bakersfield. The Air Force flat out refuses to say what it is. They lock down the entire area. Armed guards with M16 rifles form this perimeter around everything. Anything that even resembles wreckage gets quickly removed by helicopter. And the pilot's father, surrounded by all these reporters, can only say that his son had been working on something so insanely classified that he had to take a polygraph test every three months. The media needs visuals, but they don't have any. So they make this absolutely catastrophic decision. They just use the Tester F-19 box art as a stand-in for the crashed aircraft. On TV broadcasts, in newspapers, everywhere. Just think about what happened here. A toy company's completely fictional design is now being treated as official documentation of America's actual stealth program by major media outlets. And Soviet intelligence is watching every single broadcast. The crash is real. The military silence is real. And now the media is literally showing them exactly what it supposedly looks like. At least, that's what they think. Behind the Iron Curtain, KGB analysts are facing this impossible problem. They can't afford to just ignore the F-19, but they also can't actually prove it exists. If America's really achieved radar invisible aircraft, the implications are just catastrophic. The Soviets' entire air defense network would be completely obsolete. Billions of rubles, decades of research, all of it potentially wasted. So Soviet intelligence officers end up doing something that honestly sounds like a Cold War comedy. They go shopping in American toy stores. They're buying up these F-19 model kits and studying every single detail. And here's the really terrifying part. Some of the features were actually correct, like the air intakes on the upper fuselage that hide engine fan blades from radar. That's a legitimate stealth technique. The B-2 Spirit actually uses it. The flattened exhaust vents that mix cool air with hot gases to reduce infrared signatures. The actual F-117 uses virtually the same system. The inward canted tail fins that scatter radar waves, identical to early stealth prototypes. The toy designer had gotten all these things right, not because he had any classified access, but just because he understood basic physics and made some really educated guesses. So the Soviets end up spending the next three years and billions of rubles preparing countermeasures for the wrong aircraft. Perception had literally become reality. They're defending against a threat that only existed in everyone's collective imagination, and America hadn't spent a single dollar to make any of it happen. November 1988. The Department of Defense finally reveals the truth, but by then it's already way too late to matter. The actual stealth fighter was called the F-117 Nighthawk, not F-19, and it looked nothing like those sleek, elegant models everyone had been buying. Just angular surfaces and flat panels, like a flying geometric shape. So why did they actually skip F-19? The truth is almost disappointingly simple. Northrop requested it. They wanted an even number to avoid confusion with Soviet aircraft designations. MiG-29. Su-27. The Soviets used odd numbers, so Northrop just wanted even numbers to stand apart. That's literally it. Just administrative preference. But that one simple decision triggered congressional investigations, international intelligence operations, and billions in wasted Soviet defense spending. The F-19 won the Cold War without ever actually existing. Because the most powerful weapon isn't always what you build. Sometimes it's just what your enemy thinks you might have built. The US military skipped a number and created the greatest stealth weapon ever. One that couldn't be countered because it couldn't even be found. Subscribe for more hidden Cold War stories.